Tonight marks the beginning of the 1988 ratings and, as it happens, the beginning of a new era for the Australian television industry. No more Kerry Packer, Rupert Murdoch or the Fairfax dynasty. Instead, you'll be meeting for the first time together tonight a very different breed of media mogul. Men with no previous experience in big-time network broadcasting. Or what do the new owners matter to you, the viewer? Well, for a start, if there's a pricing scandal in one of Frank Lowy's Westfield shopping centres, will we hear about it on Channel 10? If the walls start to crack in one of Christopher Scase's luxury resorts, will the Seven Network cover that? If there's a rumour about Alan Bond's beer being contaminated with urine, as was recently claimed about an unfortunate Mexican brewing company called Corona, will we be free to chase that down on Channel 9? Well, that censorship issue in a moment, but first the more basic one. Tonight, the start of the ratings. Hundreds of millions of dollars invested, at risk. The three of you must be very worried men. Mr Scase. Well, from my point of view, Richard, uh, we've uh, done surveys over summer with our new Australian family entertainment lineup, and uh, we're quietly confident that we'll do very well overall, and we're certainly very confident that we won't finish in the third spot in 1988. Mr Lowy? Well, we are happy what we have uh, bought. We know we've got a lot of work to do. We are doing it, and we are also quietly confident. What was it, money or power, that attracted you? We bought into the business because we feel that it will be a good investment. What about the power it brings you? What power? How long does it take for you to get Hawke on the phone when you want him? Well, I've known Mr Hawke for a long time. If I wanted to talk to him before, long before, I could still talk to him, and I suppose I could do the same. But does he answer the phone a bit more quickly now that you've got a television station? Not at all. Not, not like that? Not like that. It's got nothing to do with the television ownership whatsoever. I think uh, this question of power that is uh, often mentioned is, is rather more perceived than real. Yes, but it goes deeper than that, though. I mean, I don't suggest for one moment there's anything wrong with it, but you and Hawke are mates, aren't you? I think I have a good relationship with, uh, with uh, Hawke the man, uh, as I do with uh, John Howard the man. You must be able to communicate at all levels. I really believe that in both government, the people very much determine the outcome, not television or newspaper proprietors, and in the case of ratings, the people also determine the winner. Your predecessors, your men like uh, the Fairfax family, uh, the Packers and the Murdochs, they were people that were actually born and bred to the media. They were people who uh, had uh, daily dealings with defamation and they knew how to deal with pushy politicians, show them the door if uh, it was in their interests. Uh, Mr Bond, if you had the experience of a Kerry Packer, would you have settled with Joe for that 400000 as quickly? Well, you know, I made a decision, and as you do as a chief executive of a, of a company, you make a decision on the facts you've got at the time, and you come to that conclusion and you make the decision. Now, it's all very well to look back and say, in hindsight, would you do it differently? Yeah. Now, the answer to the question is, in most cases, based on experience, you would do it differently. Does the payment lend itself, or the question of the payment, lend itself to a yes or no answer? Did Joe require it? I think it does, and we've said very clearly that he made no, uh, only wanted to get what he believed was his, uh, his just uh, amount. Uh, get his just desserts, otherwise you couldn't do business there? No, not at all. Uh, and that is a question that obviously is going to be answered in more detail to the tribunal, and so I'll leave that matter there. <laughs> OK, all right, then you leave it there, but I'm going to take it over here. Have you ever paid money to do business in Queensland? Absolutely not. Ever made a donation to the Bjorki Peterson Foundation? Absolutely not. Not a hundred thousand dollars? Zero. Do you think there's an element of hairy chestedness about the Nine Network, your network, feeling that it's got to all the time chase down every business issue that, uh, that you're associated with just to show, look how independent we are? I, I get that feeling occasionally that they want to be first on with it, um, uh, the news, and that does often happen. Um, you get a bit irritated with Nine. I mean, after all, you had the chili business and this $400,000 question, and it was all run intensively on your own network. Well, you can't be sensitive. If, if you're in the public arena, you're in the public arena. And if people want to ask you questions and I think it's of a public interest, we've well, got to answer them. Let's say that um, <clears throat> you decide to go fishing this Easter and you ring 721211 in Canberra and say, you know, could I speak to Bob? And he comes on and you say, how about we go fishing up the Barrier Reef at Easter, as we did uh, a year or two ago. I've got a great weekend in mind. And he says, sure, that'll be tremendous, Frank. But uh, look, I was going to give you a call anyway. Whilst I've got you on the phone, 
What about this fellow you got down here in Canberra doing your political reporting? He's just an irritant. He's getting... He's, he's upsetting. He just doesn't know what he's on about. Why don't you get rid of him and get someone that knows his way round? How are you going to cope with that sort of political well, Richard, pressure? I don't really think that you know what or what you perceive what the relationship of a friendship between two people are. First of all, you don't impose on each other to ask something like that, and I'm sure Bob Hawke wouldn't ask me a question like that, the same way as I wouldn't ask him something that would either embarrass him or make it difficult for him to... Mr Lowy, to say he's done it. No to. He's done it, and he did it, in the, uh, in the weeks before the 1983 election to uh, Dame Leonie Kramer, the uh, then chairperson of, well, the, uh, I mean, of the ABC. But what you're referring to, he would do it with me because I'm his friend, or I'm supposed to be his friend. I'm sure he wouldn't do it with me, particularly because I'm friendly with him. And I wouldn't do it to him because I'm friendly with him. I wouldn't ask him something, a question like what you're proposing to do here now. Because if you're a friend, you don't try to impose on your friendship, you try to keep your friendship off the business or political level. Mr Bond, what happens when he says to you, ah, oh, look, that Laurie Oakes is, uh, yeah, let's get rid of him? Well, I think we're going to be asked those questions, whether it's by Bob Hawke, John Howard, and the answer to the question is, look, you know, you, we don't uh, uh, control uh, ed editorial content. The whole basis of uh, freedom of speech is freedom of speech. And uh, all we can do is, uh, uh, you want to come on and make your point on the television. That's the place to make it, and not make it on the phone. Yeah, but he'll thump the and table and say, look, Alan, you write the checks, why don't you get rid of him? Well, I think he's, I would say, well, listen, Bob, you're a much better debater than uh, the person you're talking to. We'll give you air time. You get on and debate it with him. Political pressure on you, Chris? Which is a former journalist, I understand, uh, I think, probably even more intimately than my two colleagues here, that editorial <coughs> freedom is the most important element of preservation in a television station. It's also the engine room for so much of the business that's generated. So at the end of the day, it makes very good common sense that if you want to re retain the best journalist, then you must give them editorial freedom. And it's, uh, from my point of view, that is without qualification. Mr Lowy, five years in the Israeli army you had? Not quite. Nearly five years. If you'd been given the order as an Israeli soldier, to go and break the hands or the arms of his uh, Palestinian children who were throwing stones at you, would you have obeyed the order? Well, I mean, you're talking uh, my five years of involvement in the Israeli army was some uh, 40 years ago. Israel at the time, or Palestine at the time, Israel was trying to establish itself to be a state and uh, the conditions that were then, they not, uh, not appear today. I think that the media generally, all over the world, is painting a picture of the current affairs not in a very um, impartial way. The dilemma yeah. is this, the dilemma yeah. is this. If you perceive your soon-to-be-launched new current affairs program yeah. having an anti-Israeli bias, what well, are you going to do about it? First of all, the question is hypothetical. Yeah, exactly. And it's very difficult to answer hypothetical questions. And uh, I uh, hope that we will not be a party, or Channel 10, and I'm sure that 7 and 9 will not be a party to biased reporting of any kind. Uh, if it happens that they are, in my opinion, then I think it will be up to the management who runs that particular program to do the right thing, but I certainly would not be able to interfere with it. Mr Scase, is it the case that uh, you instructed, or had instructed, your stars uh, not to attend Mike Gore's Sanctuary Cove launch up in Queensland there uh, last month? There are a lot of uh, colourful stories in Queensland, Richard, and that's just another one of them. Is in fact, right? uh, the chief executive of my media and entertainment division, Bob Campbell, uh, attended the function, as did a number of other executives. So it's a, it's a true furphy that you, it sure you, is. you, you banned them? Yeah. Now, Mr Bond, uh, not that long ago, Nine cut off a telecast of the cricket at a... Uh, at a critical and an exciting point and said to the viewers that, I mean, if you want to see the rest of it, you can go down to uh, a pub and have some swan lager and watch it on Sky Channel. Now, you own the pub, you own the beer and you own the Sky Channel where these people would have to go down to see the rest of the cricket. Um, I happened to be watching the cricket and I really was equally disappointed <laughs> a lot of the other uh, public were at that time. But, you know, we run all sorts of sporting things. We run the races mm. on... Uh, the horse racing is run on the Sky Channel. It's not particularly the Sky Channel. The, uh, uh, the cricket 
cricket. I mean, there are all sorts of sporting programs. So you can't run them all on a television. So having a different medium there allows more people to get access to it over a period of time. But that's skating around the central point. There, uh, I suggest you have, with the television network, the ability, if you so choose, to boost your beer sales through a different method other than just straight advertising. Well, we haven't done that. We, we advertise on all stations. Uh, we're advertising on the basis of the, the rating performance and it's done independently uh, by the brewing people and they pay the full rates on Channel 9 and uh, as they do uh, on 7 or 10, unless they're going to give me a package. Can they give me a cheap package, Frank, this year uh, for beer oh, advertising? Oh, it depends how cheap. <laughs> but um, uh, certainly the, uh, uh, they have to run separately and I mean, any, any uh, uh, suggestion that they, they're not totally independent is just in the imagination of uh, a few people. Uh, to suggest to Ellen or to myself or Chris that we are going to run one business for the benefit of the other. If we don't show the programs that the people like and we don't get the ratings, I think we'll be uh, not successful television uh, owners. And I think in uppermost in our mind will be is what the people out there like, not what, how we can help each other's businesses. Would you do business with Chile? I've never thought about it, Richard. South America has enormous potential uh, that could produce one day uh, a very major economic contribution to the but world. But is there any principle at stake there? Y yes, I, I would or no, I, I wouldn't uh, dare do business. Having not been there and not knowing the politics or the business of the country, I'm not qualified to comment. Mr Lowe? I think I'd make a business decision whether to do business in Chile or anywhere else. Uh, simple as that. Of course, that's exactly what you did, isn't it? Yes, I don't think it's, uh, as business people, if you're going to, I mean, I export to 58 countries of the world. I mean, I can't say, look, I'm not going to export to one country or another, or do business with another country. No, I believe that the world will be a better place through the free transfer of trade. And I think any restrictions on any country are not good. Yeah, but I mean, I can run that down to a dilemma. I mean, what sort of arms would you sell to the PLO, that sort of thing? Yeah, well, I don't, I don't deal in arms. No, 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 <laughs> I mean, no, I, but I mean... Well, would I? And I think there are limitations to which you, uh, one refers to and one has a moral, uh, ethical code. There's no difference whether it's a television station. You've got to look for what the, the market requires and provide that requirement. And certainly the Australian market loves our local programs. You haven't asked the question that uh, because of the competition amongst ourselves and uh, we are all want to do better than it was done before, I think you'll see that the audience will grow because certainly I believe that all three of us will put better programs on individually and collectively than it was in the past and I believe that the, the, uh, the uh, viewing public will grow and the cake will grow in advertising. I will see more Australian programs to air this year yeah. than at any time in the last yeah. 20 years. At the moment the uh, financial markets underrate us. Do you think there's too much sex and violence on television? Uh, you know, uh, I'm sure you didn't have anything to do with it, but, for instance, there was that shooting that took place in, uh, in America. Now, Channel 9 did not show the gun in the mouth. They cut that. Now, in other, st other stations did show that. Now, we, don't th we think that's in not good to show those sort what of things. What if I could guarantee you three rating points if you put the gun in the mouth? Well, I don't think that. I think that ratings are only one thing. I think you've got a responsibility of the public beyond ratings. All right, five rating points. Would you put it in the mouth? No, it would not. I think you have to draw the line and certainly that that uh, I know that the people that are watching our programs and looking for those sorts of things are very conscious of that. And I think, I think we can distill it even more simply than that Richard that the Australian viewer by and large does have uh, uh, very much a conservative attitude to television and if there is too much sex or violence they will very simply turn off. Gentlemen to conclude uh, once around the semicircle. What's your favourite program? I was going to say Elf, Richard, but I think it's on at the same time tonight. <laughs> so you'll be watching 60 Minutes, huh? <laughs> What's yours? No, well, I like watching sport, quite frankly. I'm involved in sport, and of course Channel 9 is the number one sports station, and, uh, and I think that uh, it really that covers, uh, covers the whole spectrum of it. And, um... That's all right, you can come back. <laughs> <laughs> your favourite program? I like News and Current Affair. Oh, you can come back too. Gentlemen, thank you all very much. Thank you.